Welcome to realenglishconversations.net. The podcast where we chuck the textbook out the window and show you how to drop the right word at the right time so you can finally fit in with the cool kids. Hey Amy, what's up? Ah, not much. Everything's good. How are you doing? I'm pretty chill. Nice. All right, so today we're going to be talking to you guys about some really common words that relate to money. Uh, We've got some cool phrases. We've got some cool words. I was really surprised when I was doing a little bit of research on the different slang words that are available for money. It's ridiculous. Really? There are hundreds and hundreds of words, but... I was really able to identify the ones that we use on a daily basis super quick. So that's what we have for you guys today. (laughs) Well, let's get into some of the first examples. I love talking about money, and this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Everybody talks about money every day. Let's say, for example, you place an order for a pizza, and you're getting it delivered. You might hear the person on the other side of the phone say, Are you paying with cash or card? Or, Are you paying with cash or plastic? Right. And I might respond, I'll just pay for that with plastic. Yeah. So obviously you guys know debit cards and credit cards are made of plastic. And that's where this sort of comes from. In today's day and age, more people pay with plastic than Mm -hmm. they do with cash. So it's kind of evolved into a new slang sort of term that's widely understood. Everybody knows when you say, I'll just pay with plastic, they know that you're talking about your debit card or your credit card. It's just something you hear all the time. All the time on a daily basis. And yeah, so it's super easy. The next one is kind of funny. This is one of those (laughs) words that when you actually think about the meaning behind it, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, here we go. It's a substitution for instead of using the word money, you can use the word dough. Okay. Like we're talking the same word as cookie dough or bread <laughs> dough. Right. You were in the we were in the shoe store the other day and we were looking at some shoes and I'm like, man, those shoes are really nice but they cost a lot of dough. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, maybe it goes back to like when the the baker of the town used to pay you know, for things with his dough or something like that. But this is super, super common. Another way that you might hear it is, I've been putting away some dough so I can travel this summer. Uh, So you're putting away some money so you can travel this summer. You're saving up some, Mm -hmm. some dough. Yeah, exactly. So maybe two friends are walking down the road and they see something that they want to buy. Like, I don't know, they want a beer, a coffee or something like that. The, The guy says, oh... You know, I'd like to, but I've just got my plastic with me. Can I borrow some dough? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so good. So another um, really, really super common word to substitute for dollar or dollars is the word buck. Oh, yeah. I like like that. As in like a male deer. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You might hear this sort of sort of like this. Hey, do you have three bucks? Uh, I can lend you 10 bucks, no problem. Oh, sweet. It's only a couple of bucks, so that would be awesome. <laughs> you know, you've just got three sentences there where we, we could have said, do you have $3? I have $10, no problem. Oh, it's only a couple dollars, sweet. But it sounds way more casual to use bucks in yeah. that sort of, you know, conversation. Yeah, you'll hear that used on a daily basis yeah it's just a complete substitution for the word dollar okay so we've got another example here where when we're talking about money in quantities of thousands of dollars so obviously it might be like a paycheck or the value of a car or something like that we've got a couple of different (laughs) ways and i had to actually look into the meaning behind one of them because i had no idea so our good resource at Google <laughs> has given us the answer to why we use the word K okay. um, to indicate thousand. For example, you might hear a phrase like, the car is only worth 2K. And you're thinking, well, what the hell is K? 
Yes. So what it stands for, it originated from a Latin word, kilo, which means a thousand. So obviously they've just taken the first letter of this word and made it into a slang expression that indicates something is a thousand dollars. So, so for example, I got paid five K last month. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, two, two K, 10 K, 20 K. So two K it replaces two thousand ah. dollars. You'll see it in writing, in formal writing, and you'll hear it on the street. Another substitution instead of K is you might hear G's. So these are letters. Yeah, just letters. So <laughs> G's is short for grand, which mm. grand indicates a thousand in this case. But when you use G, you have to put like an apostrophe s so it's like two g's ah this right? car is only worth two g's yeah this car is only worth two g's it's only worth two k you uh, can hear the difference there the two k doesn't have the apostrophe s but the two g's does it's said almost like a z uh, g's uh, and yeah. they're interchangeable Oh, totally interchangeable. And so I got paid 5K last month. I got paid 5Gs last month. No uh, problem. Perfect. All right. So we've got a little bit of a phrase, I guess. Yeah. I would say this phrase is, it sounds really funny, to be broke. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I've broken you. <laughs> <laughs> this is super, super common to hear too. So to be broke means to have no money. Dude, I'm broke. I can't make it to the club this weekend, right? Yeah, exactly. So if your buddy says that to you, it means he has no money. Like, None. he's paid the rent, he's already blown or spent all of his money on whatever, and he's, he's left with nothing, so he's broke. Uh, <laughs> another example might be, I've been flat broke for a month now. I can't wait for my first paycheck. In that certain circumstance, you can't wait to get paid again. Maybe you just got a new job and you, you were out of work for two months. So, you know, it's been a long time since you had some money flowing in. Yeah, you can't yeah. wait for that dough. Another, yeah, you can't wait for some more dough. <laughs> couple, <laughs> couple G's. Yeah, <laughs> be able to spend a few bucks. And last example is being flat broke. So... I'm flat broke. I don't even know how I'm going to pay the bills. So yeah. this is like, you know, using the expression broke again, but just flat broke, same meaning. You, you don't, don't have, have anything. You don't have any money. You have no money. On the opposite side of being broke, you might have a household with two adults working in it. In North America, it's super common for both the man and the woman to have a job. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, one is considered the breadwinner. Now, what's One's a breadwinner? The one that makes more? Yeah, the one that brings home the bigger paycheck. Right, one who brings home the bacon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, but let's stay on the breadwinner topic. Yeah, the breadwinner first. Okay, so you might hear it um, used in this way. He's the breadwinner because she is raising the family. So oh, okay. obviously he is out working while she is at home raising the kids. She's the stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. and he's making the making the dough at work. Yeah, he's or the breadwinner. You might hear a couple of girls gossiping. Ah, she's got a really great job now. I think she's the breadwinner of the house now. I wonder how her husband feels about that. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes back to the male ego and wanting to support the family and whatnot but yeah. you know it's super common there's a lot of women that are very independent and successful and they're getting into some positions that allow them to earn more money than the men so to be the breadwinners they are the breadwinners now um just because we mentioned uh bringing home the bacon can mm -hmm. we think of an example to kind of back that one up i would say you lost your job, Amy. Don't worry. I'm going to bring home the bacon. Yeah, so it's just basically used in a sense of bringing home a paycheck or bringing home the cash in the household, bringing home the dough, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, super, super common expression as well. And the last one that we've got is break the bank. Break the bank is sort of used in a way to indicate 
how the person perceives a cost and whether they feel that they can afford it or not. So for example, I might say something like, oh, I'm going to pick up the concert tickets. Uh, they're only 50 bucks a piece. Uh, it's not really going to break the bank. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not really going to uh, have an effect on how we live live yeah it's not it's not expensive it's not gonna you know put us in the in yeah it's like not the difference between paying rent and not paying rent you can afford to do this activity so it's not going to break the bank or you know we might say i'm taking a trip to a sunny de destination in the winter this sounds great but i think it's really going to break the bank yeah, so this is somebody who's gone ahead and booked a vacation, even though they shouldn't, and they know when they come back from their vacation, they're going to have some tough times. They're going to be broke yeah, when they gonna get back. They're going to be out of dough. <laughs> no dough. <no. laughs> and uh, the last example might be, hey, you know, let's go out for a date night once a week. It's not going to break the bank. Let's go have dinner in a movie. Sounds like something that we would say to each other. Yeah, exactly. You know, let's, <laughs> let's go have some fun. It's The benefit is worth more than the cost. It will be a lot of fun. We'll have a good time. And yeah, it's not really that expensive. Yeah, let's just go out once a week and have a date for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to this Money Slang Expressions. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. See you later. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and you'd like to see a complete listing of everything we have to offer, including conversations, English expressions, and slang, be sure to check out our website at realenglishconversations.net.